Man of Power written by Cyprian Jossen. Chapter 2. The Real Winner. Ikemba is a man of unwavering integrity and a dedicated human rights activist, whose entire career has been dedicated to combating corruption and injustice in Nigeria. He firmly believes that every citizen, irrespective of their background or connections, deserves an equal and fair opportunity to thrive. As a lawyer and former judge, Ikemba commands widespread respect for his humane spirit, honesty, and steadfast commitment to public service. On the night of the presidential election, he found himself in a luxurious hotel suite in Abuja, surrounded by his trusted advisors and tech team, anxiously awaiting the announcement of the election results by the INEC chairman. The atmosphere in the room is thick with tension as everyone eagerly awaits the impending results. Ikemba remains composed and resolute, driven by a profound sense of purpose and unshakable conviction. He firmly believes that he is the ideal candidate to lead Nigeria into an era of unparalleled progress and prosperity. However, his advisors are overcome with a mixture of anxiety and nervousness, acutely aware of the formidable challenges they face, with corrupt politicians and vested interests working tirelessly to undermine their candidates' chances. As midnight approaches, the room remains shrouded in silence, with no results yet displayed on the screen. Fatigue begins to weigh heavily on Akemba and his team, prompting each of them to depart the meeting room in search of much-needed rest. Nevertheless, the security personnel diligently remain on guard, safeguarding the laptops that monitor the election results uploaded by INEC from polling stations across the nation. It soon becomes glaringly evident that the election has been marred by rampant rigging, with reports emerging from all 36 states of Nigeria. The youth have turned out in large numbers, unlike in previous elections, to vote for Akemba, the man who promises them that their votes will bring change and prosperity. He pledges to provide good education facilities and scholarships from primary school to university level, end electricity failures, build good roads for the transportation of agricultural products and create a future where no young person will ever dream of risking their life crossing through Libya to reach Europe. When the clock on the wall strikes 4 a.m., the chief security officer watches in shock on the small television screen in his office as the INEC chairman declares Segan Adelik the winner of the election. He immediately rushes to Akemba's room and that of his advisors, shouting, They have rigged us out. Papa God, let it not be what I am thinking. Nigeria is unbelievable. The more you look, the less you see. Akemba's heart sank as he realized that his dream of a better Nigeria had been shattered. What the hell just happened, he exclaimed, his voice rising in disbelief. His advisors were equally stunned. They had all worked tirelessly to get him elected, and now their efforts had come to naught. The room was filled with a sense of despair and disappointment. Ikemba's chief advisor, a grizzled political veteran named Musa, spoke up. Sir, we need to challenge this result. There's no way that Sikh and Adelik could have won this election fair and square. We need to demand a recount and investigate any irregularities. Ikemba nodded slowly, deep in thought. He knew that Musa was right, but he also knew that the battle ahead would be long and difficult. He needed to weigh the risks and benefits of challenging the election result, knowing that it could result in violence and unrest across the country. As they discussed their options, his tech team came forward with some disturbing news. Sir, we've been monitoring the voting data from across the country. We've noticed some significant anomalies in the results, especially in the regions where Sikh and Adelik had strong support. There's a high probability that the election was rigged. Ikemba felt a surge of anger and frustration. He had always known that the political system in Nigeria was corrupt, but he had hoped that the people's will would prevail. Now it seemed that even the democratic process had been compromised. His party spokesman, a fiery young man named Emeka, spoke up. Sir, we can't just sit back and accept this result. We need to take this fight to the streets. We need to mobilize our supporters and demand justice. He nodded slowly, considering his options. He knew that Emeka was right, but he also knew that violence and unrest would only make things worse. He needed to find a way to challenge the election result peacefully and legally, without causing further harm to the country. As they continued their heated discussion, Ebra Akemba's thoughts turned to the future. 
He knew that he could not give up on his dream of a better Nigeria, no matter how daunting the challenge ahead. He needed to find a way to rally the people behind him, to show them that there was still hope for change and progress. Man of Power written by Cyprian Jossen As he looked around the room at his advisors and tech team, he felt a sense of determination and resolve. They may have lost the battle, but the war was far from over. His advisors exchanged worried glances and whispers among themselves. One of them, a tech guy named Mabalaji, speaks up. Sir, we need to act fast. The results were clearly rigged, and we have evidence to prove it. We can't let this stand. He nods in agreement. Yes, we need to take action immediately. But we must be careful. We can't afford to make any mistakes that could cost us the support of the people. Another party spokesman, Mr. Oladipo, chimes in. I agree, sir. We need to mobilize our supporters and start a campaign to challenge the results. We need to show the people that we are the rightful winners of this election. Akemba turns to his senior advisor, Mrs. Abiola, who had been quiet during the discussion. What do you think, Abiola? Do we have a chance of overturning this result? Mrs. Abiola, a seasoned political strategist, looks at Akemba with a steely gaze. Yes, we have a chance. But it won't be easy. We need to be prepared to fight dirty if we have to. We can't afford to be the nice guys anymore. Ebra Akemba nods thoughtfully. He knows that Mrs. Abiola is right. If they are going to win this battle, they will need to be tough and ruthless. He takes a deep breath and looks around the room. Okay, let's get to work. We have a country to save. The team springs into action, making calls, sending emails, and strategizing their next move. Akemba can feel the energy in the room, the sense of purpose, and determination. He knows that they are up against powerful forces, but he also knows that they have something that their opponents don't, the support of the people. As the night wears on and the team works tirelessly, the real winner whose mandate has been stolen, thanks his team. He knows that this is what he was born to do, to fight for justice and to create a better Nigeria for all its citizens. And as the sun rises over Abuja, Ikemba, the strong man knows that the battle is just beginning. But he also knows that they have a real chance of winning in the Supreme Court, and he's ready to do whatever it takes to make that happen. Ebra Akemba was born into a family of Nigerian elites. His father was a successful businessman who had made his fortune in the oil industry, while his mother was a prominent lawyer and human rights activist. Growing up, he was exposed to the struggles of ordinary Nigerians, and this inspired him to pursue a career in law. He attended the University of Lagos, where he studied law. He excelled in his studies and was known for his sharp intellect and dedication to justice. After graduation, he worked as a junior lawyer at his mother's law firm, where he gained invaluable experience in fighting for the rights of marginalized groups. Ikemba soon became known as a fierce advocate for justice and human rights, and he gained a reputation as one of the most talented lawyers in the country. He worked on several high-profile cases, including one that involved a multinational oil company accused of polluting a river and destroying the livelihoods of local fishermen. As his reputation grew, he was approached by several political parties who wanted him to run for office, but Akemba was wary of politics and the corruption that often came with it. He believed that he could have a greater impact as a lawyer, fighting for justice from the outside. However, everything changed when he met the love of his life, a brilliant and beautiful campaign strategist named Mkechi. Mkechi shared Akemba's passion for justice, and she convinced him that he could make a real difference in politics. Together, they embarked on a journey to create a fairer and more equitable Nigeria, where everyone had a chance to succeed regardless of their background or connections. Kechi became Akemba's campaign manager, and together, they worked tirelessly to build a grassroots movement of supporters. They traveled the country, meeting with ordinary Nigerians and listening to their concerns. Akemba's message of hope and change resonated with people from all walks of life, and his popularity soared. The couple had four brilliant children, who were all passionate about social justice and followed in their parents' footsteps. They were a close-knit family, and their love for each other and their country was unshakable. The wealth of Akemba's family came from his father's success in the oil industry. 
He had built a vast network of business connections and had invested wisely, amassing a considerable fortune. Ikemba and his family were not interested in accumulating wealth for its own sake. They believed in using their privilege and resources to make a positive impact on society, and this was reflected in everything they did. The family's dedication to philanthropy has a significant impact on the city of Onitsha and its surrounding areas. Ikemba's father built a vast network of business connections and had invested wisely, amassing a considerable fortune. The family established a foundation dedicated to improving education and healthcare in the city of Onitsha. They have donated funds to build new schools and provided scholarships for bright but financially disadvantaged students to attend those schools. Additionally, they have funded community development projects, such as the construction of roads, bridges, and community centers, to improve the standard of living for residents of the city. The family built hospitals and clinics, donated medical equipment, and financed research into diseases that helped people in the region. They provided free medical care and medications to low-income individuals and families, especially those who could not afford to pay for health services. Ikemba's family's achievement in social welfare is the secret behind his running for the Nigerian presidential election. That morning, he called his parents about the election results. He left his advisors who were having their breakfast. Ebra Ikemba was sitting in his hotel room, staring at the TV screen as news reports continued to pour in about the election results. He knew that the people of Nigeria had been let down once again, and he couldn't help but feel a deep sense of disappointment. Just then, his phone rang. It was his father calling. Hello, Dad, he answered. Ebra, my son, his father said. We've been watching the news. We're so proud of you and everything you've accomplished. But we're also disappointed by the election results. It's a sad day for Nigeria. He sighed. I know, Dad. I had hoped that things would turn out differently, but it seems like we still have a long way to go. Yes, we do, his father agreed. But don't lose hope. Remember that you have the support of the people. You have the backing of those who believe in a better Nigeria. You can still make a difference. Ebra Akemba nodded. I know, Dad. I'm not giving up. I'm going to do everything I can to fight for what's right. That's the spirit, my son, his father said. Now, listen. I have some advice for you. Okay, Dad, he said, curious. When you go to your press conference tomorrow, remember to speak from your heart, his father said. Don't be angry or bitter. Be passionate, but also be gracious. Show the people of Nigeria that you are a leader who cares about their concerns and that you will continue to fight for their rights. Ebra smiled. Thank you, Dad. That's good advice. I'll keep it in mind. I know you will, my son, his father said. We're all behind you, Ebra. You have our love and support, always. Ikemba felt a warm sensation in his chest. Thank you, Dad. I love you too. As he hung up the phone, Ebra Ikemba knew that he had a tough road ahead of him. But he also knew that he had the strength and determination to see it through. With his family's support and the support of the Nigerian people, he would continue to fight for a better future. Man of Power written by Cyprian Jossen Aisha Bello, a member of Akemba's team, was responsible for organizing press conferences. As she walked briskly through the bustling campaign headquarters, her mind raced with thoughts of the upcoming event. She had spent the last few weeks preparing for this moment, knowing that everything hinged on Akemba's ability to make a convincing case for why the election results should be overturned. As she neared the conference room, she caught sight of him standing outside, surrounded by a throng of supporters and journalists. He looked calm and collected, but Aisha knew that he was feeling the weight of the world on his shoulders. Ikemba, she called out, pushing her way through the crowd. Are you ready for this? He turned to face her, a small smile playing on his lips. As ready as I'll ever be, he replied. Aisha nodded, her heart pounding in her chest. She knew that this was a pivotal moment to tell the world what happened, and the fate of the country rested in their hands. As they made their way into the conference room, 
Aisha felt a sense of pride and awe at the sea of supporters who had gathered to hear her boss speak. The room was packed with journalists, party officials, and ordinary citizens, all eager to hear what this man with a new vision of Nigeria had to say. As Aisha sat across from him, her thoughts drifted back to a time when their love was pure and simple, untainted by the complexities of life. It was a time when their hearts beat as one, and the world seemed to revolve around their love nest. She recalled the first time she met Akemba, and how her heart had skipped a beat at the mere sight of him. He was tall and strong, with a chiseled jawline and piercing eyes that seemed to look right through her. From that moment on, she was smitten. But as time went on, she came to realize that there was so much more to this man than just his physical appearance. He had a strength of character that was unmatched, a fierce determination to succeed, and a passion for life that was contagious. As they talked, she found herself drawn to his strength and his powerful belief in himself. He had faced adversity and come out stronger for it, and she knew that he would always be a rock for her to lean on in the toughest of times. He was the he-man in her life. But it wasn't just Akemba's strength that drew Aisha to him. It was also his passion for life and his boundless energy that seemed to light up any room he entered. He had a zest for adventure and a love for new experiences that was infectious, and Aisha found herself caught up in his enthusiasm. As they got more familiar, Aisha knew that she wanted to be by his side, no matter what the future held. She wanted to experience life's ups and downs with him, to share in his triumphs, and support him in his struggles. And so, as the sun set on that warm dry season evening, Aisha made a silent vow to herself. She would stand by this strong man through thick and thin, and together they would forge a life full of love, passion, and adventure. Ikem, she said softly, reaching out to take his hand. I'm with you, all the way. He turned to gaze at her, his eyes meeting hers in a moment of shared understanding. I know you are, he replied, a small smile playing on his lips. As they sat there, hands clasped, Aisha felt a sense of hope and possibility that she had never felt before. They were fighting for something greater than themselves, something that had the power to change the course of history. And with him by her side, she knew that anything was possible. When the strong man Akemba stepped into the conference hall, the room erupted with applause and cheers from his supporters. The hall was filled with journalists, political analysts, and members of his political party. He walked confidently up to the podium, taking a deep breath as he prepared to address the audience. The mood in the room was electric, with people standing and shouting his name. The atmosphere was filled with anticipation and excitement as everyone wanted to hear what the real winner of the presidential election had to say. As he began to speak, his voice boomed through the hall, filled with determination and conviction. My fellow Nigerians, he began. I know that many of you are disappointed with the outcome of this election, but I want to assure you that we will not give up on our fight for a fair and just Nigeria. The audience erupted with cheers and applause, as he continued. I know that many of you have lost faith in our political system, but I want to tell you that I have not lost faith. I believe that we can build a better Nigeria, a Nigeria that works for all its citizens, not just the wealthy and powerful. The room was filled with a standing ovation as Akemba finished his speech. People were shouting, clapping, and whistling in excitement. His supporters rushed to the podium, congratulating him and cheering him on. Hold on, I'd like to take questions from the press, he said. What are some strategies for overturning unfavorable results, and how can they be helpful? World Press USA asked him. It's important to understand the legal process involved in overturning results and to seek the advice of a legal expert. Strategies such as gathering more evidence, identifying flaws in the decision, hiring an expert witness, collaborating with an experienced attorney, and appealing to a higher court can significantly increase our chances of success. What advice do you have for those seeking to overturn unfavorable results? asked the Nigerian Post. My advice would be to stay persistent and not give up. Seek the guidance of legal experts and gather as much relevant evidence as possible. By following these strategies outlined, they can increase their chances of success. Can you explain the importance of collaborating with an experienced attorney and hiring an expert witness? HP Press
Collaborating with an experienced attorney who has a track record of successfully overturning results can be extremely helpful in providing guidance and support throughout the legal process. Additionally, hiring an expert witness who can provide specialized knowledge or opinions can strengthen our case and increase our chances of success, he answered. How does appealing to a higher court increase your chances of success? asked the Nigerian Tribune. Higher courts have more resources and expertise to review cases, which can work to your advantage. By appealing to a higher court, you can have your case reviewed by more experienced judges who may be more likely to overturn the decision in our favor, Ikemba answered. Have you congratulated the president-elect, His Excellency, Sigan Adelik, after the results? asked the Nigerian pilot. Ikemba smiled. Before you call someone your excellency, you must know that whatever catapulted him to that post must be excellent. A carpenter cannot become a surgeon overnight, and you as a journalist, it took you many years of studies. After the press conference, one of the local observers, Mahdi Shi who addressed Nigerians in the hall about how Al-Haji Ibrahim Abdullahi and his men robbed them in broad daylight, anything is possible under INEC, anything should be expected for postponing the elections and the House of Assembly elections. It has been foreseen. In fact, let me add that I will not be surprised if they postponed elections to give them enough time to assemble the winners even before the election. I will not be surprised that in the kitchens of INEC, they have the names of the people to be declared as governors, and it is just a matter of time. The postponement of the elections by INEC is just a prearranged issue. It's an arranged business. We have no confidence anymore in INEC, we have lost confidence in them. I know Al-Haji Ibrahim Abdullahi for more than 20 years ago, the impression I had about him then, but not now, was that he's gentle, composed, and decent, but with the way and manner and speed, head, neck, shoulder, and leg, he ignored every clarion call and he participated in perpetrating and putting in place the most scandalous, the most fraudulent the most irresponsible election process in the history of Nigeria in spite of the billions he requested for, in spite of the billions of naira released to him, for hundred billion naira and more, in spite of the assurances that now turned out to be fake. Six hours into announcing the result, in al Haji's body language, I saw it coming and the moment he declared Sigan Adelik as the winner, many things came into my mind. I remembered Chinua Achebe in his book Arrow of God, Chinua Achebe said, If you see an old woman dancing in the middle of the bush, dancing, and dancing endlessly using the style, all the tricks, but you who is watching the old woman have not heard or seen any drummer, have not heard the music she is dancing into, Achebe said, If you don't see the drummer, that old woman knows the drummer. If you don't hear the music, that old woman hears the music, therefore for Alhaji Ibrahim Abdullahi, he was dancing to a piece of music, he was dancing to a drum, and we know the drummers, we know the rhythm he is dancing into and time will tell, who are those drummers? The drummers who made him forsake Nigerians of their elected president Ebra at Kemba and their choices in the other elections, to choose what should have been free and fair elections. Instead, Alhaji Ibrahim Abdullahi destroyed the future generations, the old and young, and also missed the chance to be a national hero. International observers discredited these elections. Local observers discredited these elections. There are clear shreds of evidence of fraud and the involvement of INEC officials, security officials who helped in the rigging of the elections. The provision of INEC stated that he can review the results within seven days. He did nothing. He went head on, adequately, arrogantly without any remorse, to declare a winner. INEC can tell people any story. We are willing to hear the stories. Almost 60% of the Nigerian population voted for Akemba because of his revolutionary projects aimed at changing the country from a kleptocracy to a Western-style democracy. His projects were centered on creating new opportunities for the youth, improving access to healthcare and education, and investing in infrastructure to promote economic growth and development. Akemba wept during his press conference. Scenes of the vandalism in polling stations across the nation were projected on a big screen for the international observers, journalists, and Nigerians to see that INEC under the eagle eyes of Alhaji Ibrahim Abdullahi deceived the whole world with the new Beavis machines, the best election digital technology to happen in Africa.
It turned out to be the biggest fraud ever in the history of voting in Nigeria, where Sigan Adelik, the president-elect by him won with only 24% of the votes cast as his tugs snatched away the ballot boxes. And results were not transmitted in real time from the polling station. Akemba was sitting at his desk, looking through the election results again, when Aisha entered the room. Your Excellency, I want to tell you something, she says. What is it? he replies. Have a seat, Aisha. Are we safe? There is a plot against you, she tells him. What? Who are the plotters? asks Akemba, surprised. I'm not sure, but I think it's someone within your inner circle. That's impossible. Who can I trust then? Akemba stunned. Don't worry, Your Excellency. I will find out who is behind this conspiracy, Aisha reassures him. A group of nefarious AGP members, headed by Kaode, the chameleon, convenes at the stunning Sigan Adelik's villa, with the insidious purpose of scheming against Ebra Akemba, the real winner of the presidential election. The cabals, who hold sway over both the police and the army, are poised to quash any opposition to their twisted agenda. Removing Ebra Akemba from the equation would spell the end of any hope for justice, paving the way for Sigan Adelik alias Jagaban's ascent to the presidency. Akemba is a threat and they are determined to stop him by any means necessary. I saw Akemba crying on television, Kaode tells them. Before this meeting, the chameleon organized a huge smear campaign on social media, where he employed an army of fake news writers and influencers to assassinate the image of Akemba as the man who brought calamities to the people of Nigeria because of his hate speech. In their thousands of posts, they painted him to look like the bad guy. Are we all set? asked Kao the chameleon. Yes, we are. Everything is in place, Kiyamo nods. We will stop him from filing his petition in the court. Kaode says confidently. I know someone close to him. My guy, so you planted a mole, Kiyamo exclaimed. Good. Remember, we have to tell the INEC chairman not to give his lawyers access to the Beavis server. If not, that man will put us in a hot soup, one of them warns. Why not convince him to work for us in a government of national unity? Sikhan Adelik asked them. You are a nice man, Your Excellency. I will gun him down like Martin Luther King. He is going to make another speech at a rally this evening. I will shoot him from the crowd with a silent gun, the notorious killer, M.C. Alyamo, assures Jagaband. If he escapes the assassination, I will ask the DSS to arrest him for inciting violence, Kiyamo boasts. There was a rainbow in the sky as the man Ebera Akemba walked onto the stage and began his speech. Suddenly, a commotion erupted in the crowd. A group of people protested and shouted. Aisha witnessed this and alerted Akemba's security team. They successfully controlled the situation and escorted Kemba off the stage. Aisha engaged in conversations with various individuals who attended the rally. In her interactions, she stumbled upon a lead that implicated Yuzuka, who had defected from the AGP to Akemba's party. She informed Akemba about this development, and together they devised a plan to ensnare Yuzuka. It was revealed that Yuzuka's thugs, disguised in Nigerian police uniforms, had committed acts of voter suppression and disenfranchisement during the elections in his state. As a sitting governor, he had manipulated the election results in favor of the AGP, the party of Jagaband. Consequently, Akemba arranged a meeting with Yuzuka under the pretense of discussing a political alliance. Aisha and the security staff were present in the room. You, Your Excellency, are the hero of this election. So, what is the purpose of this meeting? Yuzuka asked Akemba. As the meeting progressed, Aisha tirelessly worked to gather more information and evidence regarding the conspiracy against Akemba. She recognized that time was running out, and swift action was necessary to thwart the plotter's nefarious schemes. Meanwhile, Ikemba and his team devised their own strategies to counter the cabals. They understood the importance of caution and strategic planning, for a single misstep could jeopardize their lives. Aisha on her side has infiltrated the meeting of the plotters. Kiyamo instructed everyone to keep their plans and discussions confidential, leaving no fingerprints anywhere. 
As they left the villa one by one, Aisha stayed behind to seduce Kayamo and gather any last-minute information from him. She knew that this was a critical moment, and any piece of information could make a difference. Kayamo revealed the secret to her of his plan to attack Akemba's convoy on his way to the court. She knew that she had to act fast. I feel very tired sweetie, she told Kayamo. Can we see tomorrow? he asked her. Of course, yes, she replied. Immediately, she moved to Akemba's office and told him how she infiltrated the cabals. Your Excellency, we have to change our plans, she said. The plotters are planning to attack your convoy on your way to the court. The idea is to kill you and your lawyers. Akemba's face turned pale as he heard the news. What? That's insane. How did you find out? A source within the inner circle of the plotters informed us. We have to act fast, Aisha replied. Ikemba rubbed his forehead, trying to come up with a plan. We can't postpone the hearing. It's crucial that we file the petition today. I know, Your Excellency. But we have to change our strategy. We need to beef up security and take an alternate route to the court. We can't risk your life, Aisha said firmly. Ikemba nodded in agreement. Okay, let's do it. But we have to make sure that no one finds out about the change in plans. The plotters must think that we're still taking the usual route. Don't worry, Your Excellency. We have everything under control, Aisha assured him. Ikemba sighed, feeling the weight of the situation. This is a dangerous game we're playing. But we have to fight for justice, no matter what the cost. Aisha nodded. I'm with you, Your Excellency. We'll get through this. Ebra Akemba took a deep breath and stood up. Let's get moving. We don't have much time. Aisha nodded, we have to be careful, Your Excellency. I know the next step, to take if ever the plotters come close to you. With Aisha's assistance, they managed to alter their route and avoid the planned attack. They safely reached the courthouse, allowing Akemba to file his petition. However, as they departed from the courthouse, the driver made a wrong turn, and they were ambushed by another group of armed men, bandits, specializing in kidnapping wealthy individuals capable of paying hefty ransoms. They forcibly abducted both him and Aisha, driving them to an undisclosed location. Days passed, and no one had heard from Akemba or Aisha. It was assumed that they had been kidnapped or worse. The police launched an investigation but their efforts yielded no results. As time went by, people began to lose hope, and Ebra Akemba's family was left in anguish. Just when all hope seemed lost, the kidnappers made contact. They demanded a large sum of money in exchange for Akemba's safe return. The family refused to pay the ransom as they requested and turned to his supporters for a nationwide protest. But to everyone's surprise, Aisha was behind the kidnapping to extort money from Akemba's family. Her betrayal left everyone stunned, especially Akemba, who had trusted her. Detective, all right, Aisha, we know you were involved in Ebra Akemba's kidnapping. We have evidence, and we need you to tell us everything you know. Aisha, looks down, trembling, I don't know what you're talking about. Detective, sighs, Aisha, we have your phone records and we know you made several calls to one of the kidnappers. We also have CCTV footage of you meeting with them before the kidnapping. So, please, tell us the truth. Aisha, pauses, takes a deep breath, okay, fine. I was involved, but I wasn't the only one. There were six of us. Detective, leans forward, who were they, Aisha? Names, please. Aisha, looks up. Reluctantly, there was Chike, he's the one who drove the car that blocked Akemba's convoy. Then there's Deji and Tund, they were the ones who held Akemba at gunpoint. And there were two women, Lola and Amaka. They were in charge of watching Akemba and making sure he didn't escape. And finally, there was Bayo. He was the one who contacted us and promised to pay us if we carried out the job successfully. Detective, writes down the names, and what was your motive, Aisha? Why did you do this? Aisha, looks away, it was Bayo. He said he was working for someone who wanted to win the presidential election, 
and he needed a Kemba out of the way. He promised us a lot of money if we did it. I know it was wrong, but I needed the money, and I thought a Kemba wouldn't get hurt. Detective, Sighs, Aisha, you should have known better. You put an innocent man's life in danger for your own gain. Aisha, tears up, I know, I know. I'm so sorry. Please, can you help me? I'll tell you everything I know, and I'll testify against the others. Detective, nods, we'll do what we can, Aisha. But you have to understand that there will be consequences for your actions. Meanwhile, Segan Adelique's spokesperson denied any involvement in the kidnapping, stating that it was a baseless accusation and that Adelique had nothing to gain from Akemba's disappearance. However, the police continued their investigation, determined to uncover the truth and bring justice to Akemba and his family. What really happened was that Akemba had just attended a charity event in support of disadvantaged children when his convoy was attacked, and he was taken hostage. His family and supporters were distraught, but they refused to pay the ransom demanded by the kidnappers. Days turned into weeks, and hope began to fade. Just when all seemed lost, a surprising twist occurred. Aisha, a close friend and trusted ally of Akemba's, was brought in for questioning by the police. She had always been a strong supporter of his, and her involvement in his kidnapping was unthinkable. But after hours of interrogation, she finally broke down and confessed. The news of Aisha's betrayal spread like wildfire, and it left everyone stunned. Akemba was especially devastated, as he had trusted her implicitly. It was a painful lesson for him, but he was grateful to be alive and back with his loved ones. Akemba was released with the help of the security agents and his ex-girlfriend was reminded in custody waiting for more investigation to find the real person who paid her to carry out such an ugly operation. All hands pointed to Segan Adelik, the president-elect, but he denied the accusation in a press release from his party that was published in all the major Nigerian newspapers. Social media carried the news and everyone took an angle that suited their story, juicy and shameful for some, since Akemba, a married man with children had a side chick it means that he is not a man of integrity and cannot be the president of a big country like Nigeria. The opposition, Segan Adelik's camp published the scandal on all their Twitter handles to show that the man who wanted to create a better Nigeria had something to hide in his cupboard. But their own candidate the president-elect was convicted of drug trafficking in the United States. My enemies are attacking my image for no reason. They claim that Jagaband is a drug dealer that my Chicago degree was forged, that my name is not genuine, and that my age is fabricated. So, how did I manage to become the president? Segan Adelik inquired. The bad guy was Akemba, not him. Segan had a secret weakness that he concealed from the public and his supporters he was addicted to drugs. He used his own product to manage his stress and maintain his energy levels during the campaign. His addiction put him at risk of exposure and could have jeopardized his presidential ambition.